Audi's just revealed a bonkers new car that's part coupe, part SUV, and part pickup truck. It's called the Active Sphere, and it's technically just a concept for now, but it shows that Audi's serious about expanding its range of electric cars. And judging by this concept, Audi might well be considering a jacked up all road version of a future RS7. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about it. I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. This isn't the first Audi concept car with the word Sphere in its name, but it is definitely one of the strangest. The first car was called the Sky Sphere. It was a two-seat roadster that could change shape depending on whether you were driving in town or on fast country roads. Then there was the Grand Sphere. This was a posh GT car that showed what the next generation of Audi S8 might be like. Audi then went a bit rogue with the Urban Sphere. It was supposed to be a future city car, but it was the biggest car Audi has ever made. It looked more like a futuristic Q9 than an A1 replacement. That sounds strange enough, but I reckon the Active Sphere might be the weirdest concept of all. For starters, the Actisphere is giving me strong RS7 vibes. It has a pronounced bonnet, a smooth curvy body, and a rounded roof like that car does. But things start to get really weird when you look underneath all these areas. The Actisphere isn't a low-slung four-door coupe. It's actually a jacked-up off-roader. It comes with contrasting black trim around the wheel arches, and the side skirts stick out like thick soles on a pair of trainers. The Audi Actisphere is also massive. It's just as long and just as wide as an Audi Q8. This combination of a sleek body and loads of SUV details reminds me of the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. Well, maybe one that's wearing stilts. But there's something even weirder about this Active Sphere concept. It can turn itself into a pickup truck. Now, I'll tell you more about that a bit later. But what do you think of the Active Sphere's design? Should Audi make a jacked up version of the RS7 that can go off road? Or should they stick to making SUVs like the Q8? The Active Sphere looks pretty wild, even for an Audi concept car, but it's all built using technology you'll be able to buy in a range of Audi production cars very soon. It's made using something called the PPE chassis. This is a fancy way of saying it comes with Audi's very latest battery and motor technology. Yes, this new Active Sphere is an electric car, like almost every single concept car is these days. Audi has developed the PPE chassis with Porsche, and it'll appear in the new electric Macan, as well as the forthcoming A6 e-tron and Q6 e-tron. As well as the next generation EV technology, the Active Sphere also comes with adjustable air suspension that can raise the car up by up to 40 millimeters. When you max this out, the car has a total of 248 millimeters of ground clearance. That's almost as much as you get with a normal Q8. Now that's not particularly special, but Audi has also given the car extendable metal plates that drop down from the sills when you raise it up. These remind me of Tony Stark's Iron Man suit. They look cool, but they don't really serve a purpose. It's basically the off-road equivalent of driving around town with the adjustable wing on your sports car permanently extended. On a similar note, Audi has also reprogrammed the Active Sphere's daytime running lights to change shape when you stick the car in off-road mode. I'm sure the local wildlife will appreciate this next time you go green laning in your posh Audi SUV. The Audi Active Sphere has a very weird interior. For starters, you can see most of it from the outside because the car has so many windows. It has side windows, a couple of windscreens, and a panoramic glass roof. But it also comes with big glass panels in the doors, a bit like the ones on the McLaren Senna. This concept also has something I've never seen on a car before, a glass grill. I'm not talking about a crystal effect grill like the one on a Skoda Enyaq. This Audi has a completely transparent front end. You can sit inside the car and see all the way through to the road ahead. Well, that's so long as you don't fill the front boot with too much luggage. This is supposed to make it easier for you to drive over rough terrain because you can see jagged rocks in the path ahead. Now this sounds cool, but I wonder how it would affect the car's crash safety. And besides, how do you keep all these windows clean? I don't see a single windscreen wiper anywhere on the car. Anyway, back to the cabin. Inside you get four separate seats instead of two front seats and a rear bench like in most cars. There's also a heated and cord storage box that runs through the middle of the car. The active sphere is supposed to show what future Audis could be like when self-driving technology is fully developed. This means it comes with a completely hidden steering wheel, but the dashboard usually sits on the floor behind the pedals, but it can fold up and deploy a steering wheel if you want to drive yourself. This isn't the only part of the active sphere that can fold away. The rear hatchback can open to turn this coupe into a sleek pickup truck. The rear window slides up onto the roof and an extra glass panel extends out of the floor in the boot. Audi reckons you might use this for carrying bulk sports gear around, so it fitted special mounts on the tailgate that can hold a few electric bikes. Don't fancy biking? Audi has also given the Active Sphere a built-in ski rack that folds out of the roof. Audi has specifically said that, and I quote, miles per hour or lateral acceleration are no longer at the top of the design specifications for this new generation of cars. Hmm. Does this mean the Active Sphere is slow? 
Well, no, absolutely not. It comes with dual electric motors that make a combined 442 horsepower and 720 newton meters of torque. This means it'll accelerate from 0 to 60 in 4.9 seconds. That's only a few tenths of a second slower than the latest SQ8 e-tron, which will do 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. If this is what Audi can make when it isn't trying to go fast, then I can't wait to see what the next generation RS cars will be like. In fact, if you want to see what a fully electric RS6 replacement could be like, click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen or follow the link in the description below to watch my video about Audi's forthcoming electric RS models. The Active Sphere's performance is in the same ballpark as other Sphere concepts. But this car has one unique feature I've never seen before, and it's in the roof. Audi has fitted the Active Sphere with four VR headsets inside a special roof cubby, a bit like the overhead lockers you get on a plane. These use augmented reality technology to replace a normal touchscreen infotainment system. They connect to the car's onboard computer and project graphics directly into your line of sight. Motion trackers inside the car monitor the position of your hands, and these let you adjust the settings and control the car's features using simple gestures. This technology isn't just for everyday driving either. Audi has developed a load of special off-road features too. The goggles can display a 3D map of the car's surroundings to help you plan an off-road route, and they can display virtual graphics of the car's front wheel so you know exactly how close you're driving to large rocks or deep potholes. Now this sounds cool, but I think the VR goggles feel a bit old school. BMW is developing an infotainment system that can project augmented reality graphics directly onto the car's windscreen. This seems a lot simpler and maybe a bit better. BMW revealed this technology in the iVision D and it's planning to put some of this technology into a new electric saloon that will arrive in 2025. If you want to see more information on this, click on the pop-out banner that should be appearing in the top right hand corner of the screen and there's also another link in the description below. A good aerodynamic design is crucial if you want to squeeze as much range out of your electric cars as possible. Because of this, Audi has given the Active Sphere a smooth aerodynamic shape and it has a set of small rear-facing cameras instead of normal wing mirrors to further help reduce drag. That stuff isn't particularly special, but Audi has also given the car some clever aero wheels. These aren't just plastic hubcaps like you get on some cars, I'm talking about the Tesla Model Y of course. These actually have movable sections within the spokes that can change shape while the car is driving. They can open to help call the brakes if you're driving quickly on a twisty road, but they can also close to reduce drag when you're cruising, which helps improve the car's range. So how much range does the Audi Sphere have? Well, it comes with Audi's latest 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. This holds enough charge to drive for well over 372 miles on a single charge. It also features an 800 volt electrical system that I'll let you recharge the battery using 270 kilowatt fast chargers. These will give you up to 186 miles of extra range in about 10 minutes. And this is exactly the sort of technology you can expect to see in the next generation electric cars from Audi and Porsche in the next few years. The Active Sphere won't actually go on sale, just like all the other Audi Sphere concepts won't. But parts of the car will inspire future production cars that Audi will reveal very soon. I'm talking about elements of the design, as well as battery and motor technology from the new PPE platform. Audi plans to release two all-new EVs using this platform before the end of 2023. One is likely to be the new Q6 e-tron SUV, and the other will probably be an A6 e-tron saloon. Now make sure you subscribe to this channel so you're notified when I upload a video about these two new four road cars. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. If you want to watch some more videos, I've picked a couple out for you there. I think you'll like it. Just click on those windows to watch them. Or if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to this channel. You can do that just by hitting the Carwell logo there. Simple.